Hello, my name is Mitch Miller. I am a professional counselor um, and I like to post videos from time to time on topics relating to mental health, psychology, uh, and theology. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about um, mindfulness from a Catholic perspective. I'm a practicing Roman Catholic, um, and so that's my perspective, and I have some, some important things that I think um, people should take into consideration when they think about mindfulness, especially if they're Christian, and even more especially if they're Catholic. I'm going to talk about good things and some concerns about mindfulness. So, uh, so first off, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is a, uh, a strategy used to treat mental um, health problems and behavioral problems in the mental health industry today. There's a mindfulness-based treatment for just about any diagnosis you can find, um, any behavioral or mental health problem, depression or anxiety, eating disorders, um, even personality disorders to some extent. Uh, and uh, basically what it is, is it's um, stopping or slowing down your 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 day, your the way that you think enough to be able to notice things as accurately as possible, trying to capture as much of your experience as possible, but capturing it completely non-judgmentally. So trying to take in everything about your experience as raw data, and that's it. No judgment, no opinions, anything like that, um, and just describe it. So like if I want to, normally, if I'm holding this pen, I'm just gonna hold this pen and, and write with it. But if I'm mindfully holding the pen, I'm just noticing in how it feels. If I feel a cramp in my hand, I'm describing it to myself, maybe just in my head. I'm like, oh, that's interesting how that cramp feels. It feels like this. I can feel pressure in this point and in that point and that point. I can feel how the pen arches right here. I can feel how it's smoother here than here. And, and I can see its color and I can feel the texture here and here. And I can hear how it sounds against my hand and all that stuff. So that would be mindfully holding the pen. Nothing magical about it. It's just um, really keying into details in a non-judgmental way. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, it's really useful in mental health. And it's really useful in the spiritual life, even for a Catholic. Uh, it's the cornerstone of everything in, in Buddhism is uh, based on mindfulness. And it's also, I would say, very important to Catholicism as well. Um, there's a couple of problems where... Uh, it, where there's differences between uh, the modern mental health industry's understanding of mindfulness and Buddhism's understanding of mindfulness versus a Christian and Catholic understanding of mindfulness, which I want to explain now. Um, so firstly, uh, a problem is that um, mindfulness is attributed to Buddhism in the modern mental health industry, which is not entirely true. There was a um, practice of mindfulness in the early church going way back to the first centuries after Christ. Uh, uh, Evagoras Ponticus is an example. John Cashin is, exa is an example. Um, uh, John Climacus is an example. Um, there's all kinds of examples. St. Augustine um, probably has a lot of examples as well. Origen of Alexandria has some examples. Uh, even in the Bible, uh, St. Paul in, in um, the first letter, I think it's the first letter of Corinthians says, you know, we take captive every thought, we test every thought, um, you know, uh, to, so that we don't make a mistake with our thoughts. Um, uh, we, and so there's, um, there, it's not entirely true to say that mindfulness is, is, that Buddhism has the corner market on mindfulness. Besides that, um, there's a couple of, uh, of differences in the way it's practiced. So in the Buddhist understanding and in the modern mental health industry's under, understanding of mindfulness, mindfulness uh, is basically completely non-judgmental. I like to describe it. It's like you, you shift into neutral gear. You, you become morally neutral. You don't make any judgments about the world. You just notice things. If you're feeling depressed, you just notice how it feels. If you're feeling sad, you just know how it feels. Notice how it feels. If you're feeling angry, you just notice your heart rate. You notice where the tension is. You slow everything way down and just take in as much detail as possible. And just try to capture it just as raw data. It's not good or bad. It just is what it is. Um, tremendously useful. However, um, there are times when in the Catholic understanding, you do need to make a judgment. 
uh, in the Jewish Judeo-Christian tradition, there are things about the world that are really good and that are actually bad. And for the, the Judeo-Christian, the important thing is to, to get it right, is to make correct judgments about the world. And the Western-based practices of mindfulness follow that philosophy, which is based predominantly in, in um, Stoicism, uh, as well as some other things. Uh, and that goes back to, uh, you know, not too long after the Buddha. So the, these things aren't there. Um, they aren't from Buddhism. They, they were in ancient Greece uh, around the same time. Um, so what you do in Christian mindfulness is you, you shift into neutral gear. You notice details about the world. You notice your feelings. But it doesn't stop there. You try to dial it back so that you can re-evaluate and come to new judgments, hopefully better judgments, more accurate judgments about the world. Um, and this is really, really practical when you think about it. If there's an injustice happening, for instance, um, you don't just sit and mindfully notice things. Uh, if there are bullets flying and bombs going off, if there's, a, uh, if there's someone about to be um, lynched, you don't just sit and mindfully notice Oh, that man is about to be lynched. Uh, oh, look at how that rope looks hanging from that tree. Oh, look at, you know, these people, what they're doing. And, oh, isn't that interesting? No, you don't, you don't just sit and take things in as raw data. At that point, you need to make a judgment and you need to act. Uh, you should feel angry. You should feel fear. You should feel those things. And those emotions are given to you by God to motivate you to do the right thing. You should be angry in the right ways for the right reasons to the right degree. Um, you don't just sit and notice it and, and let it pass by as just raw data. You use it as fuel to do the right thing. In the same, same way, it could be said about um, sadness or happiness. You want to be happy about the right things at the right time. You don't want to be happy when an injustice is done. You want to be angry to correct the injustice. You don't want to be sad when something good happens. If you're sad when someone's married or has a, a baby, uh, there's something wrong with that. That's your, your judgment is flawed there. And where mindfulness can help you there is to take a step back and notice your own biases, notice your own judgments and how they're flawed, how they're not in accord with the order of the universe and the order of God's plan, with the structure of creation. You notice the discord so that you can Convince yourself to think in a new way that is more in order with the universe, with God's creation, with the law of life, etc., with the commandments, with the gospel. You want to have right judgments so that you're sad at the appropriate times, you're happy at the appropriate times, you're angry at the appropriate times. You might even be irate at the appropriate times. So you feel um, uh, ero eroticism at the appropriate times. You feel shame at the appropriate times. These are all emotions given to us by God and they serve a purpose and they're there for good reason. They aren't part of fallen creation. They were emotions with Adam and Eve um, they're just as there are emotions now. Not everything about emotions is, is, is bad. Uh, so I think that uh, any practice of mindfulness that loses sight of that uh, demands that we abandon part of our humanity. Um, I think that's human to feel angry at bad things or cry at sad things and be happy at good things. I think there's something inhuman about a practice which encourages you to just step back and just take everything in as raw data because at that point, why not, why not just be a machine? Because machines can take in raw data. Um, that's, that's, I'd, I'd say that's kind of inhuman. Next, I, I want to kind of... Um, give a, a, a brief description of how I explain and get people to practice a mindfulness, at least begin the practice uh, in, in my own work as a psychotherapist. So um, there's, it doesn't need to be very abstract. I encourage people to start with concrete things, with the five senses, looking in your area and just looking at stuff in the area and naming out loud what you see. I do this time and time again. And so I'll say, I see a lamp. I see a Kleenex box, I see a mirror on a table, I see a light switch. It's a circular light switch, it's got a little perforated edge on it. And you're just naming things. And then you move into your hearing. What are you hearing? I hear the fan blowing. I hear the cars outside. I hear myself sitting in my chair. I can hear my own voice. Uh, I can 
even in some degree, hear my eyes blinking, which is really weird. You think that you, you just stop to think long enough about what all your body is taking in. It's pretty astonishing that all these things are happening. And you it's just a sort of shift of consciousness to, to notice what it sounds like to hear your own eyes blinking. What do I smell? What do I taste? You're just naming it. And then what do I feel? I can feel my shirt weighing down on my shoulders. I can feel the chair underneath me. I can feel my glasses. I can feel my hair on my head or, or lack thereof. I can feel my beard pushing against my cheeks as I'm talking. I can feel the floor underneath my feet. Just naming them. Uh, and that sometimes can take people 10 minutes to an hour just to be able to do that. And then from there, uh, you treat your thoughts and feelings just like any other sense. It's your sixth and your seventh senses. I'm noticing, just like I notice the feel of my glasses on my face, I notice what this pencil looks like. I notice its shape. I notice my own thoughts. And I notice I'm thinking it's warm in here. I'm thinking that fan has been on for a little while. Maybe I should turn it down a little bit. I'm thinking, hmm, Maybe I am paying more for electricity running that fan than I ought to be paying for. I wonder how much it costs to keep that running per second, keep that fan running. Um, I am noticing, I'm thinking about things I have to do tomorrow. I'm noticing, I'm thinking about um, the weather, uh, whatever, whatever your thoughts are. I might be thinking of, wow, I'm, I'm noticing, I'm really thinking what a failure I am, what a schmuck I am, you know, uh, where I really screwed this up or that up. Or it might be the opposite. I'm noticing, I'm really thinking, I'm really pretty awesome. And I'm the cat's meow and man, people really ought to give me uh, a lot of respect and a lot of uh, you know, uh, praise for how awesome I am. I'm just noticing that. I'm noticing my feelings. Uh, I feel uh, sad or happy right now. I feel like, oh, today's been an okay day. It hasn't been the greatest day. It hasn't been the worst day. Uh, feel maybe slightly sad because it's dark and cold outside and it's winter and it's a little depressing around this time of year but no more or less than you know, and you just notice those things and just in doing that you can notice things about yourself that you don't otherwise notice when you're well, as i like to say when you're in gear um, sometimes if to go with the gear analogy sometimes if you've ever driven a stick shift sometimes you go into the wrong gear you go from first gear you accidentally go to second you know even instead of going to second you go to third gear you skip a gear or sometimes you go from third gear instead of third to fourth you you accidentally put it in back in a second when you're trying to go faster and then it creates problems for your car what mindfulness does is it puts you back in neutral so that you can look at what gear you're trying to get into and make sure you actually get into that gear um, that's, that would be a Western Christian practice of mindfulness. A Buddhist and, and um, modern secular understanding of mindfulness would be like, just put it in neutral and leave it neutral all of the time because we don't judge things. We just take in data. So, um, all right. So thank you for watching. That's my explanation of mindfulness. Um, let me know if you have any comments, um, uh, questions, comments, or scathing rebuttals in um, the comment section below. Uh, if you're interested in more of this stuff, please contact me. I have a website. I also have a small private practice, which I run in Wisconsin. Um, and uh, so I uh, hope to see you back here for more videos in the future. Bye-bye.